Hey everyone, in today's episode, we're going to learn how to use the Corona Shadow Catcher material to integrate 3D objects into HGRI environments or backplates. We're going to start by adding our background environment. In this case, we're going to use a spherical HGRI. To do this, we're going to open the material editor by pressing this button or the M key. Then, right click in the view and select Maps, Corona, Corona Bitmap. Select the HGRI you want to use. For this example, I'm using a free HGRI from HGRI Heaven. I'm going to leave the link to the website in the description. In the HGRI load settings, we need to select Real Pizza and then click the OK button. After this, we're going to add the HGRI to our environment map. To do this, press the A key to open the environment and effects window and then drag and drop the Corona bitmap from the Slate Material Editor to the environment map and select Instance. To see the background in the viewport, we're going to open the viewport configuration by pressing Alt B and in the background tab, select Use Environment Background. If the viewport background is blurry, we can change the viewport resolution under the Display Performance tab and change the maximum resolution of the viewport background environment to 2048 pixels. We need to be careful with this resolution as this can affect the performance of 3ds Max. I recommend the default value or a maximum of 2048 pixels. If you don't have a backplate and you're only using a spherical HGRI, I recommend starting with the orientation of the HGRI and selecting a view that you like. If you need to mirror the image, like in this example, you can change the tiling U value to minus one. Then, using the viewport, we can adjust the view to match it as close as possible to the background. Once we have done this, we can convert the view to a Corona camera using the Create Corona Camera from Active Perspective View button in the Corona toolbar. After this, we can make some final adjustments to the camera, like moving the Edge, Y, or Set Axis. We can also move the camera target to center the objects with the background, and if needed, change the field of view or zoom factor. It is also important to move or rotate the objects so they have a better position in the scene. Once we have aligned our objects with the background, we're going to create a plane under the object and adjust the size so it can cover the drop shadows. After this, we're going to open the Slate Material Editor and right-click the view, then select Materials, Corona, Corona Shadow Catcher Material. We're going to assign this material to the plane. Then, we're going to connect the HGRI to the Shadow Catcher backplate map. Corona Shadow Catcher includes three projection modes. The first one is a screen. This is used for backplates. Environment is used for spherical images, like the HRI in this example. And the last one is Do Not Alter Projection, which will just show the map in the plane. We need to match the projection mode to the environment mode in the Corona bitmap. For example, if I want to match the current screen projection mode, I need to change my Corona bitmap to a screen instead of a spherical. We can see that the background and plane are now matching. But for this example, we're using a spherical projection. So we're going to change the bitmap environment mode to a spherical and the shadow catcher projection mode to environment. In the shadow amount section, we're able to change the intensity of the shadow. If we lower the value to 0.1, we can see that the shadows are really light, almost white. And if we increase it, we're going to get darker shadows. For this example, we're going to use a value of seven. In the reflection section, we can have the shadow catcher to reflect the 3D models. The options we have in this section are the same as the ones we have in the reflection section of the Corona material. If we set the level to one, we can see that we have a blurry reflection. We can also change the glossiness to one to remove the blurriness of the reflection. It is also possible to use the Fresnel IOR to get a mirror effect for the reflections. We can use this option, for example, for wet roads or highly reflective surfaces. The alpha mode section includes three options. If we select always solid, the alpha of the shadow catcher is going to be displayed as white in the alpha channel. If we change it to always transparent, then it's going to show as black. And the last option is for compositing. This option is really useful if you are planning to use the shadow catcher in a compositing software like After Effects or Fusion. To make it work, we need to enable the direct visibility override under the scene environment and change the color to black. 
Then we'll be able to use a post-processing software to compose the render into a backplane. If we have lights in the scene, we need to enable them to work with the shadow capture material. To do this, we need to select the light or corona light material and under the non-physical properties of the light, check the shadow capture illuminator option. After selecting this option, we can see that the light is properly showing in the shadow capture material. Without this option enabled, the lights are not going to be visible. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to click the like and subscribe button. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. And thank you for watching.